Italian car manufacturers have always designed some of the most attractive automobiles, especially in the 70s and 80s golden era of supercars. Not only did the sleek styling catch your eye, but performance was unbeatable when the cars actually worked. Sadly, mechanical reliability was not among the Italian top automotive achievements. However, that bridge between Italian beauty and mechanical reliability was finally gapped with the introduction of the De Tommaso Pantera in 1971. Thanks to the sleek body lines penned by Tom Tijarda and coachwork by Ghia, the Pantera features a long, low hood line, a compact yet comfortable cabin, and an abrupt cutoff cam tail rear, trademark styling of other 1970s mid-engine supercars, such as the Lamborghini Mira and the Maserati Bora. Abundant power and torque were supplied thanks to an ultra-dependable mid-mounted 4-bolt main 5.7-liter 351 Ford Cleveland engine. While the original Pantera was easily capable of the supercar performance levels of the Mira and far quicker than the Maserati Bora, the Pantera was also known for its effortless torque at both low and high speeds and ultra low cost maintenance. Thanks to a low center of gravity, excellent weight distribution, minimal weight in the front end, and bulletproof 5-speed ZF transaxle, the powerful clutch, and more than adequate AC, the Pantera is a user-friendly, easy-to-drive, predictable, balanced, and forgiving. The lightweight small-block Ford 351 was mounted deep in the chassis, permitting the sweeping rear profile, while lots of rubber on the ground meant great handling. The De Tommaso Pantera was produced first in 1971 and all the way through 1993. And throughout its production, it had a lot of different evolutions. The Pantera was designed by Alejandro De Tommaso and he was born in Argentina. And because of that, the symbol for Pantera, the, for De Tommaso, the little T with the blue background, the blue and white stripes in the symbol come from the flag of Argentina. And the little T in the symbol comes from Alejandro De Tommaso's family cattle ranch branding. So the little T is actually the brand that they used to use for their cattle, which I thought was a unique little touch for these cars and something not a lot of people know. Now, the Pantera is not the first De Tommaso to have a Ford engine. That actually started with the Mangusta. And the Mangusta was fairly popular, um, but it had a steel backbone chassis, whereas the Pantera was upgraded with a monocoque frame and chassis. So it is a much more um, redesigned and revolutionary design that made it a much better car. The original Pantera produced in 1971 is very different than the one you see here today. They evolved a lot throughout the years. So 1971 was the first year and the base model. Then in 72 and a half, they came out with the L model, which stood for Luso or luxury. And it had some upgrades just to make it, make it a more luxurious car. Uh, in 74, they came out with the GTS. And then they came out with the Group 5 Pantera in the 80s and the group 5 pantera is what you see in front of you here today now this one happens to be a gt5 group 5 s which the only difference between just the normal group 5 and the group 5 s is the flares so on the first group 5 cars they were fiber fiberglass riveted flares whereas on these it's all steel and the s literally just stands for steel Along with a lot of exterior upgrades, the Group 5 cars had a much more luxurious interior. So they add the wooden inlays everywhere, more leather, a nicer headliner, and they have little touches that I'm always about all the little touches in cars that just make them that much more extra and aren't necessary. They don't help the uh, drivability at all, but you sit down and you notice things like the little cattle brand T logo of Pantera or of De Tommaso inlaid into the wooden uh, piece in the door, or, you know, just all the gauges are a lot higher quality than they used to be. Things like that, that just add up. You sit down and you just feel uh, like you're in something that's super high quality and plush and luxurious.
One of the things that makes Pantera so uh, noticeable and famous is the fact that it's the sleek Italian design, but with the reliability of a Ford engine. And it also doesn't hurt your wallet nearly as much if you ever have to fix anything that breaks because it's a Ford, so parts are easy to find and a lot cheaper than the Italian cars. Now, one of the funny and interesting things about these cars is they had, as everyone knows, the 351 Cleveland engine. However, in the 70s, Ford stopped giving them the engine, producing the engines here in the US. So Dayton Lasso had to source the engines from Australia where they were still being produced. Then eventually the supply ran out in the late 80s, so they had to switch over to the 351 Windsor engines instead. Now, the nice thing about the Ford engines when you're driving them around is a lot of Italian cars, uh, they're busy. You're, you're doing a lot of work when you're driving. Whereas with this, it has so much torque that driving around town, you can kind of stick to the low gears and not really worry about it. It's not revving up high real quick. It's very drivable and user-friendly around town, which is nice for someone like me who's in Southern California because with the mixture of traffic and uh, a lack of long open roads to drive on, that's something you definitely have to appreciate in a car. Uh, one of the things about this car is it has the luggage compartment back here, and a lot of the Panteras don't have that. The, this whole section is missing or not here, and so all you get is this giant wide open engine bay, which is really interesting to look at because the engine's recessed deep in the car, and it's just it's kind of like when the trunk pops, like, oh, you know, but this here is useful because it gives you the extra storage space. If you want to go for a long drive, you and your wife throw some luggage in the back of the car and just cruise to Palm Springs or wherever you want to go. It's nice to have. A lot of cars will be remembered for their appearances in movies or famous ownership. And the Pantera is no exception. Now, one of the people that owned one of the early Panteras, a 71 Pantera, was Elvis Presley. And it wasn't just his ownership that made the car so famous. He had a bright yellow Pantera that quit on him one time. It died, which surprisingly enough, because it has Ford engines, so they're not known for doing that, but it happens and it died on him. And he got so mad at his car that he pulled out his gun and just shot it. So a lot of people will remember the Pantera as the car that Elvis Presley shot. There were over 7,000 Panteras in total produced, but there was only 187 GT5S Panteras in total. And this car happens to be the 15th from last produced. So it is an extremely late model Pantera, one of the very last ones to be built. It was fully restored in Italy for over 75,000 euro. And it really shows that the paint's excellent, the interior's nice. When this car first showed up, I was really impressed because Sometimes you never know as a broker what you're going to get when a car is delivered. Um, and this one, it just, it was awesome. I got in the car, it was beautiful, and I turned the key, it started instantly, it shifted smoothly. It's just, it's, it's what you dream of as a broker when you get a car, that it just, it works this well. So I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, please like, subscribe, and stay tuned because we got a lot more cars coming in and a lot more videos to do in the very near future.